Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. I'm your host, Joe Bahoda, and today I want to talk about something that uh, just came up uh, recently. I was sharing with a fellow Christian content creator, and that is, you know, we need to be patient when we're dealing with people who just don't see things or one, you know, please don't get pride and arrogance, you know, thinking, well, you see it and they don't. So therefore you must have better discernment or you're better than they No, We all can be duped to err as human, all that. So number one, don't get wrapped up in pride. If you see something that they don't, but I was sharing with them that, you know, we, we need to have patience with people because everybody has blind spots. And because we have blind spots and it doesn't matter what, you know, Christian, theological, denominational camp you're in, we all have them. And, you know, as I shared before, I came out of the prosperity gospel word of faith movement, and a lot of people are still in the movement, so clearly they have blind spots, and clearly that they have not seen, or they, they don't see yet, or they have not been awakened to some of the abuses or tragedies or whatnot in that camp. Well, recently here, I just did a video about the Steve Lawson scandal, the Steve Lawson situation, and I got really encouraged because I had a couple guys, you know, I, I believe are guys, it could be gals, who knows, that reached out to me and basically said, hey, you know, I enjoy your video, you know, Joe, keep doing what you're doing type of stuff. Um, but they were in the reform camp and some of them have, were in it for decades be, before they saw it. So I'm going to go ahead and read, um, read their comments and, and they're still on my comment page so you can read them yourself, it's common knowledge. Because um, it really did bless me and it and just goes to show you know, be patient with people because everybody has blind spots and then love them through that pain and hurt. Because for some of these people, it was an extreme gut punch. This Steve Lawson situation or any scandal for that matter is, is an extreme gut punch to some people, particularly if they've been in, in those denominations for decades. I mean, imagine knowing you've been in a denomination for decades and you've literally given your life to this movement or this church or whatever for decades and knowing that a lot of stuff was fraudulent or you know knowing a lot of stuff was wrong or bad or whatever you gave your life a huge portion of your life to this church or denomination or whatever and then it turns out that there was a lot of bad stuff going on i mean what a gut punch so when that happens saints we have to we have to now have patience but also love for them to love them through that gut punch to love them through that pain to love them through that hurt Okay. Now, again, not everybody's going to agree with these people because there's still some people that are, you know, just like any other denomination, they're going to support their Kenneth Copelands. They're going to support their Creflo dollars. They're going to support their John MacArthur's or their Vody Bacham's or in this case, Steve Lawson or whatever. They're going to do that support. And, and again, and that it's not okay, but you got to understand where people are. People are going to say what they're going to say and do what they're going to do based upon their level of perception, based upon their level of seeing. And if they don't see it, then by default, they're going to come up against it, okay? But these are two people that came on my, my Steve Lawson video that I made. And listen to what they say. This really blessed and encourages me, and I hope it does to you as well. One person came on and said, I went to John MacArthur's school, uh, TMU College back then, and know many of the players in the ecosystem. It took me 20 years but I began to see exactly what you're talking about. 20 years. He says, it took, it took me 20 years, but I began to see exactly what you're talking about. Well, first of all, thank you, sir, for saying that, um, uh, for encouraging me in the video that I made. That lets me know I'm on the right track. So thank you, sir, for saying that. But he says it took him 20 years to see it. Okay. And well, first, and number two, thank you. First of all, thank you. Thank praise. Thank you, Lord, that these people now see it. See, that's another thing, too. Doesn't really matter how long it took. So it took them to see it. Praise God as long as they see it. OK, but in this case, it took them 20 years to see it. Praise God. He now sees it. But my point is, it took them 20 years to see it. Guys, people have blind spots and we have to be patient with them as they go through. Because here's the revelation. We just need to pray for people that they see it. Pray that God opens up their eyes. And I'm going to close in prayer. prayer pray that God opens up their eyes. Because the reality is until God opens up their eyes, they're probably not going to see it. So pray that the Lord opens up their eyes. Otherwise, they're not going to see it. Okay? 
which is also going to help you instead of judging them too harshly or judging them too critically, basically saying, how can you guys be so stupid? How come you didn't see it? Blah, 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 blah. And then you, you get on your Christian YouTube channel and start basically rebuking people with no grace and no mercy and no whatever. They may have a blind spot. So in your rebuke, in your critique, again, like I've said this before, put some grace in your mouth because that blind spot is keeping them from seeing it. Now, granted, some people are just deceived because, you know, they, you know, they love these preachers because, like the Bible says, you know, because they have itching ears and they're, they're basically pumping and priming these teachers up there because they teach them what they want to hear. There's a truth to that, okay? Yes, that is happening. But in some situations, they, some of these people really do love the Lord and they just don't see it yet. Here's another one. Again, that guy was in there for 20 years. Here's another one. Okay, it says here, pastors, teachers, leaders of all, all sides are prone to sin. It is so much more glaring when a Calvinist sins like Lawson did. I don't know about that because we're all in the same, we're all, you know, we're, you know, we're all imperfect. So again, for me, I don't get into the whole denomination like you, you're better and therefore worse than anybody else. We're all prone to sin. Just like Lawson sin, there's people sinning in the Pentecostal, Charismatic, Prosperity Gospel, Word of Faith, or, you know, it doesn't matter. Baptist, it, it, it doesn't matter what denomination. This kind of crap is going on in every denomination. So, but he says the reason being is that they are so condescending. Well, again, pride and arrogance. I, I, I've said that before in the reform camp. I've said it many, many times. And yes, I saw it from Steve Lawson as well. Some of y'all don't like that, but yes, pride cometh before destruction. And I saw Steve Lawson's pride. With that being said, I saw the same pride in John MacArthur. I see the same pride... Uh, in, in Justin Peters, I see it also in Vody Bauckham. I also see it, you know, sometimes every now and again with James White. Uh, the late R.C. Sproul, God rest his soul, but I saw it with R.C. Sproul. So yes, that whole entire camp, which by the way, when we, when the other guy, when he talked about ecosystem, those are some of the players in the ecosystem, okay? And I see that kind of pride and arrogance in some of those camps. So yes, because they're so condescending. Yeah, they are. A lot of them are. I know, and look what he says here. I know I was Reformed Orthodox Presbyterian Calvinist for 57 years. Five, seven, 57 years. Okay, 57. We all idolize different paths and current pillars in the faith from Calvin, Knox, Macon to Sproul, MacArthur, Bauckham, and Washer. We all quoted or used their sayings in our sermons, theology, and doctrinal conversations. By the way, that same idolization happens in prosperity gospel word of faith circles. You know, whether it's, you know, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, the late Oral Roberts, um, you know, any of these people, man. And in, in the Pentecostal charismatic people, you know, they really revere like people like Smith Wigglesworth and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, those camps have their heroes too. And they're doing the same pastor worship, the same hero, wor hero worship in their circles as well. Okay? I suspect that Reformed Baptists and PCA folk had their own mini circle of idols like we at OPCers did. Heck, I love Piper's books. I listened to Beg for years. B.B. Warfield, Ferguson, Riken, Horton, Beak, Boyce were all great influences. The problem began with these Reformed conferences the various camps started. Many of these men stopped being preachers and shepherds and became reformed rock stars. I've been talking about that celebrity rock star culture for years, whether it's in reformed circles or Pentecostal, charismatic, um, prosperity, gospel, word of faith circles. There's a rock star mentality and it's wrong. This is what he's saying here, but he said he was in this stuff for 57 years. Okay. He's, and as he says, many of these men stopped being preachers and shepherds and became reform rock stars. White, Lawson, Washer, MacArthur, and to some extent Sproul began to believe in relish this status. A lot of the people that I just mentioned. I saw the same thing, guys. The same thing that this guy's saying, I saw it too. Okay, not to sound prideful, but I did. There is something fundamentally wrong with the doctrine, by exception, a local church that allows something like Lawson's sin to go on for five plus years. When pastors are away from their churches two to three day conferences as much as three or four times per year, there is no real accountability. Things begin to be neglected, wife, children, grandchildren, flock, God, etc. And that is so true. That's why the Bible also says your family is your first ministry. Not the church and definitely not these conferences. Particularly if all you're doing is become a rock star celebrity pastor while, while doing it. 
The elders of Lawson's church should have seen something. There is no way that Lawson could have, have shown something to indicate he was involved in. I don't know about that. Some people are very, very sneaky and secretive about what they're doing. But I understand his point. Uh, so I'm going to keep going on. It says, uh, it says I've, I've watched countless videos on reformed men and women's... And I skipped some of his comments there. Um, I have watched countless videos of reformed men and women commenting on Lawson. None of them have used scripture to rebuke Lawson. They all have used the scriptures to restore him. I don't know about that. There's some people being very, very harsh on Lawson right now, basically really giving him no grace and mercy at all. Yes, he can be forgiven and hopefully he will repent. Uh, this is important to his future. What is important to the bride of, is important to the church, the bride of Christ, is to um, debunk the uh, spurious doctrine that has plagued it for 1,400 years. Um, and he basically says how he came out of Calvinism and all that. So he came out of Calvinism um, after 57 years of being in it. So much now, he calls it a spurious doctrine. I'm not going to get into that, okay? You believe what you believe, whether you're a Calvinist or non-Calvinist. I don't... That's a video for another day, and quite frankly, you believe what you believe. That's not my thing. But my thing is, my point I'm making in this particular comment, is he was a Calvinist, Presbyterian, Reformed for 57 years before he saw it. Okay? Now think about that. Number one, so that, that's a clear indication, guys. We got to be patient with people. Because again, until the Lord opens their eyes, they're not going to see it, number one. Number two, imagine the gut punch of that. Giving your life over to something for over half a century, just to come to the revelation now that it wasn't true or you don't believe that anymore or whatever. Imagine the gut punch or the extreme transformation or the process somebody has to go through to get to that point. So what we need to do now, saints, is love them through that process. Love them through that gut punch. Love them through that huge process, transformation, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're going through something hard sometimes. And when that happens, we got to show enough grace, mercy, and love to help them through that gut punch. Amen. And again, 57 years, 20 years. And again, I have the same kind of testimonies for people who came out of the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith movement. I, got, I can give you testimony and testimony and testimony. It says, you know, I was in the movement for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years before the Lord, Lord opened up my eyes and I saw the spiritual abuses that were going on, blah, blah, blah. So whether it's Reformed or whether it's, you know, Pentecostal charismatic you know, they, they can say, you know, I was in the Pentecostal charismatic you know, movement for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years until I started seeing some of the weird wackiness and the abuses of spiritual gifts or whatever. Or if you're in the Pentecostal, or uh, excuse me, the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith, and 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 I separate those two, Pentecostal, you know, uh, charismatic and Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith, because not all Pentecostals and charismatic buy into that money, money, money cometh to me crap. So there's a lot of Pentecostals and charismatics that rebuke that garbage. Okay, so that's why I put them in two different camps. Uh, but there's people that came out of the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith circles too, and they're like. I was in it for 10, 15, 20 years and the Lord opened my eyes to the spiritual abuses with fake healings and, you know, take advantage of people financially or whatever it is. So, but thank God they came out. Praise God they came out. But in some cases, it might take decades before they do. So pray that the Lord opens up people's eyes. And thank God if you're seeing it now or whatever, thank God God opened up yours. With that being said, if you look at my thumbnail, you may have a blind spot as well. So if you still have some, ask God to open up your eyes still too. Don't just pray for other people's blind spots. Pray for your own. I mean, don't walk in pride here. Walk in humility. You still may have some too. So whether it's, you know, in church or just your regular day-to-day -day lives, you still got some things that the Lord needs revealed to you. So don't just pray for their blind spots. Pray for your own too. And open, pray that God opens up their eyes. And then two, ask God to help you love them through the process. Love them through that gut punch because their world just got rocked. This Steve Lawson scandal rocked a lot of people, whether you acknowledge it or not. It did. And now we have to, we have to love people through that. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you just to say thank you for your grace, your mercy, your patience with people, your patience with me, your patience with us. The same patience and grace you've given us 
may we freely give it and extend it to others. We acknowledge, dear God, that some of these scandals have just rocked people. And some of these people have been in it for 20, 30, 40 years. Thank you, dear God, for opening up people's eyes. We thank you for that. But we acknowledge, dear God, there's a lot of people that still, their eyes are still closed. They don't, they don't see it. They don't understand it. They have no idea what we're talking about or whatever. God, open their eyes to see their blind spots so they can see the deception for what it is. Open their eyes, God. And if there's anything in me, if there's anything in us, dear God, that we still need to see, God, ex expose our blind spots so we can see things clearly, so we can repent and change and, 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 and transform, dear God, to your image and be the people you want us to be. So God, heal us and help us and reveal to us our blind spots, dear God, so we can repent and be changed for your glory. And I pray, dear God, and once people see it, dear God, give us the, the, the wisdom, the grace, your mercy, and your love to love people through these gut punches, to love people through this pain and hurt. May we have an attitude to love and reach out and help and not just judge and be rebuking and just mean-spirited. And God, may we give people grace to love them through the deception they were in. And may we all walk in humility to admit, dear God, that we were that we were deceived. May we walk in humility because the first step to being healed is acknowledging there's a problem and there was a problem. So may we, we acknowledge that we're not above being deceived. You know, to err is human. And God, may we walk in humility so we can get healed. It's in your for your glory and your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as always, saints, if that's blessed you, um, again, be patient with people and love them through the process. Amen. If you like this, hit the like button, hit the share button, share this with as many people as you can. Subscribe if you haven't, tell others to subscribe. Until next time, know that God loves you, 92. God bless everybody.